to it, I got myself an important guest, and I don't even have to introduce her to you guys. You know, she's a celebrity in Ghana. Like, if you are looking for a celebrity to take pictures with, to take selfie with, you know, have my phone right now. Can I just take a selfie with you? Sure, why not? <laughs> But some of them just inspired me to do a video. We've not done this before. Yeah, so yeah, yes. we did a video about Yeah, we did. And we were talking about Africans versus African Americans. Exactly. Yes. And we are here again. Yes, we are. Three months or four months? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Good to see you again. Me too. But I'm seeing you everywhere. The year of return. You have no, returned. No, no, yes. no, no, it's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> My name's Ivy, okay. Ivy Prosper. Follow my YouTube channel too, which is just Ivy Prosper. Um, I work for Year of Return. I am the social media manager, content creator for Year of Return, which is under Ghana Tourism Authority. But someone might pronounce like a Ghanaian with this accent. Are you Ghanaian? I am Ghanaian. I'm also Canadian by naturalization because I was born in Ghana, raised in Canada, but now I live in Ghana again. What brought you back to Ghana? You know, it's a, a series of things, you know. Initially, I came, I was going through some challenges when I decided to come, you know, my mom told me to come, so I came. And then I ended up working for a couple of years. Went back when my contract was over, and I feel like I need to go back, I need to go back. And I think it was largely because I felt like I had a purpose, and I had something I had to fulfill here in Ghana, so I came back. And I hope you fulfilled the purpose already. It's, it's an ongoing process. And your process. Yeah. yeah. Now we're going for the year of return. Yes. I know there are a lot of questions out there people want you to answer for us. What is the year of return all about? Um, a lot of people don't know that the year of return um, was actually a response to a U.S. law. The United States passed a bill. I don't remember the bill number, but I think it was HR 1242 at the, don't quote me on that, but if you rule, um, there was a law that was passed to recognize 400 years since the arrival of a ship of enslaved Africans into the United States. At the time, it was the colony of the British, it was an English colony, but now it's Virginia. And there was 20 people whose names were actually listed on this boat that arrived there. And so recognizing that that was the beginning of the legal um, enslavement of African people in the United States, they recognized that. And so the Ghanaian government saw that initiative being done because they also were looking at doing plans to try to understand some of the challenges black people have gone through in, in the United States as a result of slavery, as a result of um, segregation, those types of things that happened, civil rights issues. And so when Ghana recognized the same 400 years, they said, oh, you know what, Ghana played a large role in the slave trade as far as having the most number of forts along the coastline and the most that are still standing. So in recognizing that, the president declared it, President Nana Kofa'ado declared it the year of return, 2019, to mark the 400 year anniversary, which was August 20th, 1619, when that ship arrived in the US. Now, we know that slavery did begin before that. There's people who were taken to the Caribbean, there's people who were taken to South America, um, but that specific date is directly tied into the documented ship that arrived in the United States. And so in recognizing that the president also opens the doors to people from the diaspora to come to Ghana, come and experience the heritage, learn the history, and then learn the culture. So the first step for a lot of these people, because they by no fault of their own ended up in other countries. So the first step is coming, learning the history, the heritage, and then now learning the current culture of Ghana and seeing if you love it enough that it's an experience you'll come back all the time for, um, if you, it's something you want to invest in the country, that's your decision if you want to. Um, if you want to collaborate with people here, then that's great. But the first step is having them understand that we see them as displaced brothers and sisters who were taken away and it wasn't their fault and you're welcome to, to return. That's the whole basis of, of your return. I know you watch my videos. I do. And I, I know and believe that you've seen a video where I interviewed a doctor who said that the year of return is historically like incorrect. Would you agree with that? Um, I, I would disagree. I think he's looking at it in the context of a lot of people are looking at that 400 year mark and 
believe that the year of return is saying that slavery didn't exist before that, but that is not what year of return is saying. Just like I was explaining, it is marking that 400-year anniversary of that particular document to ship of enslaved Africans. That yes, there was slavery before that, we know, but it's marking that specific ship. So who are the targets for the entire year of return? Well, because it was launched based on what happened in the United States, initially it was people in the African-American community, but then a lot of people had said, well, the transatlantic slavery did affect a lot more people than just the African-Americans. So I know the president opened it up to, it's not just African-Americans, anybody who's been affected by the slave trade, anybody who is of African descent. So he launched his tour around the Caribbean, so he visited some Caribbean countries, and when he went there, it was all about rebuilding relationships with people in the Caribbean. Because some of those people, there's a lot of um, tension and animosity because of what happened as well. So he felt it was important to go there and meet with some of those people and tell them that you know, you're also welcome. In, in the process, he worked on getting um, visa-free entry for Jamaicans to come to Ghana. Yeah. Um, Ghanaians already have visa-free entry to Jamaica, but Jamaicans didn't have it the other way around. Although it's still a challenge uh, for Ghanaians because um, there's a transit visa that's needed because of the fact that there is no direct flights from Ghana to Jamaica. So it causes a challenge because if you're a Ghanaian and you want to go to Jamaica because you don't need a visa, so you have to go through the UK or go through the US, which they may ask you for a transit visa. So that's the challenge that's faced. Um, even for Jamaicans, some of them have faced that challenge too, the whole transit visa challenge, but I know that the governments, both of them are working together to try to, to try to figure the whole thing out. I, I asked you this question because I've been seeing more and more celebrities moving to Ghana, you know, just to commemorate the year of return. So I was just thinking that only, you know, the American celebrities are welcome to Ghana, but since everyone is welcome? Everyone is welcome. Everyone, it's not just them. I mean, because they're high profile, people t tend to gravitate toward them. Human beings like flashy things. They don't want to admit it, but human beings like flashy things. Human beings like celebrities. So for example, I can post something on the Year of Return page of a regular person who's come to Ghana and has landed and is giving their excitement about being here, and it might be shared a few times. But if I post a celebrity, then person, oh wow, yeah, celebrity celebrities here, and then they repost and repost and repost. You know, so it's like, it's not that, it's not open to regular people. It yeah. is. For which they, they, they came in to support their movement. They came in to help promote the year of return because a celebrity coming in here definitely is going to motivate a lot of people to come in. Yes, it does. Because people, um, especially last year when Boris Kojo and, and Boswell St. John brought a bunch of their friends here, when celebrities post their experience, regular people, I have friends in yeah. Canada and in the US who send me messages to say, What's going on in Ghana? Why is this person there? Why is that person there? Oh my goodness, something's going on in Ghana. Maybe I should think about going there myself. So it sort of validates going to a country like Ghana. People didn't think about before. Because when people think of Africa, like people in America, Canada, you know, Europe, they think, I'll go to Cape Town, or I'll go to Nairobi to go to the safaris and all this stuff. Or Morocco is another place that a lot of foreigners think about. But now, with Ghana doing this, more people are actually thinking of countries like Ghana for a holiday. Because there are people who are coming who don't have any ties to this country. They're not celebrities, they don't have any friends, they don't have any relatives, they just are coming. And they come, and then they just want to learn and grow and find out about this country. I mean, so what is the impact of the year of return right now? I don't have the exact numbers, um, but I have heard that there has been a huge increase in a lot of um, areas, a lot of areas of business. So for instance, I um, spoke with one of the managers of a hotel in Elmina, and he had said that he's seen two to three times increase in bookings in his hotel because of year of return. And he knows that because people would come and they'll say, we're here because year of return, we decide to come to Ghana. So he said that he's seen that type of increase. Um, there was a lady from a restaurant in Cape Coast who said that, you know, busloads of people were coming to her restaurant that wasn't necessarily the case before. So business people are saying they are seeing an increase. I had an Uber driver who said he's happy about people coming because he's making more money and he said that there's more surge pricing, more increased pricing and demand. And I was like, oh, dude. 
he's taking money. No, he's, he's happy. happy. So he's very happy. So, so a lot of people think it's just like one area that may be making the money, but everybody benefits in some way. Um, a tour guide was saying that his particular tour company wasn't seeing an increase, but his focus is the type of tour he has, and he knows that he doesn't get a lot of people already, but he said his colleagues, he sees that they've had, you know, double, triple, even quadruple people who are booking tours on a regular basis compared to last year. Which means the year of return is really making a lot of money. Yes, to yes, and one of the hotels here said that he is completely booked for December. Moving mm -hmm. Pink said they were completely for December a few months ago. So these people are, are really seeing the business in green. I want to even tell people out there who want to move to Ghana, especially in December. Do you have any message for them? They want to move or they want to just no, visit? No, no, just visit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I know a lot of people want to move to Ghana. Yeah, no, so move. anyone who want to move to Ghana, you have a message to them. If you want to repatriate to Ghana, um, do your research. Okay. Seriously, do your research before you move. Because some people are in love with the fantasy. The idea of, uh, there's a fantasy of, oh, I want to go back to the motherland, go back to Africa, and it's in Collis. Yeah, it's a lot of But I think when you're coming from a fully developed nation, remember that Ghana is still a developing country. True. So there's things that you may have to sacrifice that you're not used to. When you come as a tourist, you won't feel the same experience as living here. So if you're coming as a tourist, you're staying at a hotel, you have hot water, the water's always coming, your electricity's always there, and you always have your Wi-Fi. But once you live here and you live somewhere, you may live somewhere and the power goes out. Even in East Lagon, it's supposed to be a high-end place, the power goes out all the time. So you have to be ready for that um, adjustment, ready that the internet is in everywhere. Like in Canada, downtown Toronto, the center of the city, not that square, you walk there, your Wi-Fi pops up to say you get free Wi-Fi for two, one or two hours. And they may have changed it by now since I left, but that's what it was when I was last there. But here, you know, you don't go to the independent square and there's Wi-Fi. No, you know, and most restaurants don't have Wi-Fi still, or they, if they do, it's not working. And they go, oh, it's finished. The data's finished. You know, so just adjust to this. What I always say to people, and do your research. Because I, I met somebody recently who said that she's moved to Ghana. And now she wants to get a work permit. And I was like, oh, you didn't research and call that before you came. No, she just mm -hmm. packed her bags, came. Now she wants to get figure out how to work, figure out all this stuff. She doesn't even have a place to live yet. She's she's sleeping in someone's house until she figures out what to do. Um, so do your research, is what I always say, before you pack mm -hmm. up and move. Or come for a holiday for like two or three months, and then you really get a, a more of an experience than just coming for like two weeks. Ivy gave us all this free information without asking us to pay, but we have to pay her back. All you need to do, what's the name of the YouTube channel? It's Ivy Prosper. Ivy mean. Prosper. Go to her YouTube channel. She got all the information about Ghana. Just go subscribe. You know how we do it. Let's rest. I also have a book. Oh, you have a book? Yes, my book is called Your Essential Guide on Moving to Ghana. It's a digital oh, wow. book on Amazon. It's only $5.95 for you to digitally download. I'll give you the link. You know, five dollars increase it to ten dollars, and I'll take a five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. And most important, don't forget to subscribe to her YouTube channel. So, boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, and I'll see you in the next one. We have fun.